greenhead routine. Welcome back. So it's time to switch off and access greenhead. Whether it's the end of the day, the match is over, the pitch has been pitched, the interview's done. Your focus now must be to maximize your growth and recharge for your next performance. The other side of competing and training is rest, rejuvenation, and more important than all of that, growth. All of that training, competition, it's a waste of time if you don't give yourself the opportunity to recover and grow from your exposure to it. You must give your brain and body time to detach, restore, and make the physiological and neurological gains that literally adapt you to a superior level. Greenhead is where you sharpen the axe, renewing and expanding your capacity to meet the demands performance and life will impose on you. You know you need challenge to change. However, growth itself does not occur in the training room, on the pitch, or in the boardroom. Growth only occurs in green zone. Your biceps don't grow in the gym. The gym is merely the catalyst that sparks that adaptation to occur. Whether the growth occurs or not is entirely dependent on the quality of your recovery. Your growth will always be proportionate to the quality and quantity of your recovery. We call this process super compensation. And the hormones that power this, testosterone and estrogen, and the feel-good hormones, serotonin, endorphins, dopamine, and oxytocin. Maximizing the quality of your recovery is just as important as maximizing the quality of your training and competition. They are all inextricably linked. The emotions that characterize this zone should include relaxation, contentment, and peace. The second you're finished competing or training, you need to get straight into green zone and maximize the quality of your recovery. This green head off switch is not a passive thing that just happens when you're not training or competing. It's an active part of the development process that you need to optimize if you want to maximize your development trajectory. The off switch, when flicked, moves you straight into green head. There are three areas we need to optimize. First is your attention. You want to turn it down and remove any focus from training or competition mode. Second is your energy. Defined in physics is the capacity to do work. We need to turn the taps off, reducing any of the activation hormones, adrenaline, noradrenaline, norepinephrine, and cortisol. It's now time to refuel, to save, not spend. Third is your emotion. Emotions that are going to characterize this zone for you include relaxation, contentment, and peace, and they're driven by the oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. The first thing I want you to do is congratulate yourself for noticing. Most don't, particularly when it comes to switching off. It's not as obvious as the kick in the pants redhead gives us, so well done there. All emotional control begins with awareness, so as soon as you become aware of your emotions, you have the opportunity of controlling them. As soon as you act, by initiating the first step, you take ownership of the situation. On that note, first up, your attention. I want it in the here and now. If you're thinking about today or tomorrow, then you're not maximizing this opportunity for growth right now in the present. Your aim is to disconnect any thoughts and feelings around training and competition. We're going to get straight into it with a distraction countdown. Now, on my count of five, I want you to take a deep breath in, exhale, and clap your hands. Slap your thighs if you're somewhere public. Ready? In your head or out loud, deep breath in, And exhale on the count of five, four, three, two, one. Give your hands a clap or slap your thighs. This creates time to pause and disconnect from any thoughts and distraction from those thoughts, which is the first step in the process of switching them off. Next up, we're going to roll into a breathing exercise, the sigh. All you need to do is take a deep breath pause, and then exhale slowly with an audible, satisfying sigh. You can close your eyes if you want. This should feel comfortable. It might even make you yawn. If so, great. The sigh can activate rest, recovery, and rejuvenation, greenhead, in just a few seconds. This is why you usually sigh unconsciously when redhead strikes. The sigh fills your lungs more than your normal breath would, which helps oxygenate your brain and body, giving a relieving effect. It also stimulates your vagus nerve to put the handbrake on your heart rate, 
activating your parasympathetic nervous system, releasing tension, expelling carbon dioxide, and oxygenating your brain. Well done. From here, we're going to roll into two minutes of box breathing. When your breath is deep and stable, you are deep and stable. That's the focus of box breathing. It's another technique that amplifies the production of the neurochemicals that make us feel good, keeping us calm and stable. This exercise involves breathing in for a count of four, holding your breath for a count of four, breathing out for a count of four, and holding your breath again for a count of four. Let's begin. Now, inhale for a count of four, one, two, three, four. Hold your breath for a count of four, one, two, three, four. And then exhale for that count of four. One, two, three, four. Hold your breath for a count of four. One, two, three, four. Keep going with this pattern of breathing. Allow yourself to relax with each breath. Breathe in for that count of four. You're going to hold for that count of four. Then breathe out for the count of four. And again, holding for a count of four. And repeat. And as you continue with this breathing and the counting, notice any tension in your body. As you inhale, perhaps breathe into that tension. And then maybe as you exhale, Focus on releasing that area of tension. Your mind and body will continue becoming more and more relaxed with each cycle of breath. If your mind starts to wander, simply bring your attention back to the counting of the breath. Let's just do a few more cycles. Inhaling for that count of four. Holding for that count of four. And then exhaling for that count of four. And again with the hold for a count of four. And when you feel ready, I want you to take one final deep breath in and slowly exhale. You will have felt a reduction in tension or mental chatter and the initial onset of calm and relaxation that we're going to continue to build. Remember, you can return to this exercise anytime you need to, to take a few moments to center yourself and eliminate some stress. Next up, we're going to check in on your posture. Your posture primes your emotions, so let's optimize it now. Our aim is to drive positive emotion and slow energy expenditure. I want you leaning back. I want your muscles loose, your limbs slack, and soften features that imply the calm we're going to induce. Your shoulders are back, your chest is proud, and your chin is elevated. Arms and legs are wide, occupying space, and if you are walking, walk with wide steps, keep your arms loose, maybe even swing them a bit. Or if you're sat back, perhaps interlock your hands and place them behind your head. How easy is this, by the way? All of this stimulates the production of those green head hormones, the feel-good hormones, and simultaneously lowers those red head stress hormones. Right, we're going to continue switching off any attention directed at training or competition and allow it to settle on the here and now, pushing towards our goal of a broad, vague, peripheral expenditure of focus. First, we're going to use your basic human senses, sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. They allow you to very quickly bring your attention away from work, the vent, the competition, and redirect that attention to this present moment. So I want you to allow your attention to start to shift onto the next thing you notice that you can see. Focus in and relax. Perhaps exhaling as you do. 
And now, just let that focus shift again to the next thing you notice. And when you feel ready, relax and just let it shift again. Anything that your attention lands on. We're going to do this for another 30 seconds or so. Just let your attention drift. Focus on something you can see. Relax. And then just allow it to softly, slowly shift to the next thing that grips your attention. Great job. You're doing well. Let's stick with it. And as you shift to the next thing, we're going to slowly roll on to our next technique. We're going to move into another grounding exercise called progressive muscular relaxation. This technique continues bringing you into greenhead, moving your focus into the present, easing tension, slowing energy output, which all has a calming, feel-good effect, culminating in you feeling unhurried, satisfied, and composed. So here's how it works. We tense the muscle to give us the opportunity to develop the ability to let the tension go. This is part of the skill that is emotional control learning how to let go. Many of us experience stress, anxiety, or excitement and activation as physical tension in our bodies. And progressive muscular relaxation helps alleviate this tension through literally tensing and then relaxing one muscle group at a time throughout the entire body. It's another technique that can be formed anywhere, anytime, in the car, on the tube, sat at your desk, the lot. Let's get going. Get comfortable. Close your eyes if you like and take a deep breath in through your nose, filling your lungs with air. Hold that breath for a moment and then exhale slowly through your mouth. Let's begin by tensing the muscles in your feet. Curl your toes tightly, holding the tension for a count of one, two, three, four, five, and now release and expand your feet. Feeling the tension release and the relaxation spread through your feet. Notice it. Next, tense the muscles in your calves. Point your toes and press your heels into the floor as you tense your calf muscles for one, two, three, four, and five. Now, release, extending your toes, noticing the relaxing sensation that comes with it. Moving on to your thigh muscle, I want you to tighten the muscles in your thighs as much as you can and hold for one, two, three, four, and five. Now release that tension and feel the relaxation spread down through your leg and your thighs as they sink into the floor of the seat beneath them. Next up, your stomach. Pull your stomach in as tight as you can and hold. One, two, three, four, and five. Release the tension and take a big deep breath. Pause at the top and exhale. Notice the relaxing feeling spread through your abdominals. Our penultimate clench, your chest and arms. I want you to clench your fists and tense the muscles in your chest and arms and hold that tension for one, two, three, four, and five. And now release. Finally, clench your jaw, scrunch up your eyes and furrow your brow. Hold the tension for one, two, three, four, and five. And now stretch your eyes wide mouth wide and allow your jaw to drop, your forehead to soften, feel any tension just melt away. Well done. If you follow my instructions, you should begin to feel some of the tension easing off. The same way we've just used physical tension to give us the opportunity to learn to let the tension go, we can now do so mentally. Next up, we're going to engage in progressive mental relaxation. Remember, 
If you're still not feeling too relaxed quite yet, that's fine. There's always going to be a lag. Just stick with me. The aim with progressive mental relaxation is to quieten your mind, switching off your attention, slowing your energy expenditure, and bringing you a sense of calm. It works a bit like training a puppy to sit. In this case, your mind is the puppy. Believe it or not, stillness is your mind's natural state. We're going to continue building towards that now. The basic steps are, firstly, close your eyes. For now, we're going to use your breath or the rising and falling of your stomach or chest as a focal point. You're not thinking about your breath, just focusing on the raw physical sensations. Secondly, this is where all the benefits come from. As soon as you start trying to focus on that breath, you're going to start thinking about what you had for breakfast, the article on LinkedIn, the text message you forgot to reply to. When these thoughts inevitably kick in, your first job is to notice. Ironically, this moment of distraction is when most people think they've failed. I just can't clear my mind. It's the biggest misconception about any mental training. You don't need to clear your mind. That's impossible unless you're enlightened, a psychopath or dead. Your first goal is just to notice. And then your second goal is to redirect your attention, releasing your attention from whatever thought or feeling distracted it. Then redirecting your attention back to the focal point. This is how we let go and strengthen our ability to let go. Your breath, your chest, your belly rising and falling, or the moment itself for what might feel like the millionth time. The key message here is that you are in control of your attention, just like you are in control of your muscles. You don't just allow your legs to jump up and walk around your room, but somehow too many accept their mind engaging in a similar process. Noticing each thought, then redirecting it, is like a bicep curl for your brain. Every time you do it, you activate and strengthen that emotional control muscle. So let's go. Get comfortable. Close your eyes if you like and take a deep breath in through your nose, filling your lungs up with air. Hold the breath for a moment and then exhale slowly through your mouth. Now bring your attention to the focal point. Your breath, your chest or stomach rising and falling. Notice any sensations. As you focus, you may find that your mind wanders. That's totally normal. When you notice your mind has wandered, all I want you to do is simply acknowledge the thought or feeling that came up and then redirect your attention back to that focal point, your breath, chest or your belly. If you find it difficult to focus on your breath, you can count your breaths as another option. Count one on the inhale and then count two on the exhale. Continue counting up to 10 and then start over again if you make it that far. And as you continue to focus on your breath, chest, belly, or your counting, you may notice that your body does begin to feel more relaxed. You may feel a sense of calm and peace spread through your body. Take a moment to let that relaxing feeling sink in. And remember, your only job is to just notice when your mind has wandered. Acknowledge the thought or feeling that came up. And then take control by redirecting your attention back to a focal point, the breath chest, belly, or your counting. And I just want you to bring your attention back to your body can wiggle your fingers or toes, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes if you've decided to close them in the first place. Right now, we've controlled your physical and mental attention and calmed your energy flow. Now, if you don't already, you should very soon be feeling a greater sense of calm and control, maximizing your recovery and growth.
The aim is to continue positively activating your brain's calm, controlled trajectory you've set so far. That state of maximum calm is on its way. There's always a lag. A key people that can access this relaxed, calm state quickly is that they understand not to wait to feel completely relaxed or calm before they engage in restorative action. They behave calm to become calm. They just do it. They know that their feelings follow their actions, just like yours do too. So to maximize this state of peace and detachment, we're going to behave to become. The message is that if you're not quite switched off yet, don't worry. Choose the right actions and behave yourself the rest of the way there. What you need to do now is decide on what restorative behavior you're going to engage in to continue building into this restorative state. I'm going to give you three options. You have to pick one. You can do all three if you like. All of them are a form of you taking ownership. So well done. Option one. I want you to prime your environment. People, objects, feelings, smells, places, sights, sounds can trigger certain feelings and emotions. The only actions we want triggered now are those associated to restoration and growth. So first, we need to remove negative cues. We must guard against non-urgent interruptions that can disrupt you from the slipstream of relaxation, recovery and growth. Cast your eyes around the room now. What can you optimize? If you've got paperwork, bills, strewn across tables, a lanyard over a chair, move it. Work equipment, phones, laptops in sight. It's not the time or place. Move them. Shut them down. Flight mode. Out of the office replies. A set now. Remove devices from eyesight, store in a drawer, office or car. Work clothes, off. Second, you're de-servicing now as an elite performer and resurfacing to elite recoverer or dad, mum, partner, son, daughter, friend or just the relaxed you, whatever you want to label it as. Now we need to plant the positive cues. Light the incense sticks, the candles. Switch the background music on, put on your comfortable clothes, reset and wash off the day, have a shower or hot bath, anything that you associate with rest and recovery, state changing sights, feelings, sounds, smells, we want to maximize those now. Repetition in these moments is useful. Try and carve out a routine and the faster and easier it will help you flick this off switch so you can really maximize the power of your recovery. A couple of recommendations from me. Carving out a room in your home that's the rest and relaxation room. No phones, laptops, work documents in sight. Pure relaxation. If you must, leave VIP mode on in the case that there's a genuine emergency so that you can be reached, although extremely likely. Use your iPad for social media, browsing online, and make sure email and phone aren't linked to it. Option two, playfully engage your mind. By controlling the way you engage your mind, you can indirectly regulate your emotions. The objective is full engagement of your mind on something that is both playful and active. This acts as a complete interruption from any unconscious mind wandering, enabling you to take conscious control of your attention. You are in charge. Two key principles to bear in mind. The first thing is that your connection with the activity is meaningful to you. Don't just do some meditation because Gwyneth Paltrow does and she seems really relaxed. You're the expert on you. Take the time to reflect on the activities you sincerely enjoy and find restorative. If you lose track of time reading a certain author, then read those books. This is the difference between active and junk recovery. Remember, you need to give recovery the same level of planning and respect as you do your training and competition. You must prepare. Doing so means you can avoid arguing with your other half about what to watch, or worse, being forced to watch something awful. That can be a red zone activity in itself. The reason you argue in that situation is because you haven't planned ahead. Two, you must make a decision and commit for five minutes. To maximize the quality of your recovery, the aim is full engagement. Give your undivided attention. So no watching a film, scrolling through Instagram and emails. Put your phone on silent and move it out of arm's reach. 
So, for five minutes, listen to music, podcast, audiobook. Read the book or blog. Watch the series, film, documentary, YouTube clip. Play the game, virtual, bored, physical. If you're lucky enough it's an option, have sex. Engage in prayer. Or engage in the emotional control training, visualization, or positivity priming exercises that are in this app. Engage in conversation. Play an instrument. Go and play a sport. Don't compete at the sport. This isn't a training session, but go out there and play. Option three, a physical reset. You're going to find it hard to relax if you're dehydrated, hungry, need the bathroom. So reflect and address now before you go off and engage your mind playfully in whatever activity resonates most. Are you thirsty? If yes, go and drink now. Are you hungry? If it's a yes, go and eat now. Do you need the toilet? If yes, deal with it. Do you need to move? If yes, go and move, stretch, walk, play. If you're saying yes to these questions, then you're not maximizing your recovery until they're dealt with. So do that now. A final but potentially significant piece of advice relevant to some more than others. The people around you. These people have a disproportionate impact on the quality of your emotions. Mood is the lens through which we look at the world. So by making sure the mood of your family, friends, cohabitants is optimized, you maximize the likelihood of having an enjoyable, restorative decompression. Don't think that people or social environments that aggravate you are something you have no control over. It's your career, your future, and therefore everything in it is your responsibility. If you arrive home to a demanding partner, family, friends, the first 15 minutes is crucial. I really recommend hitting mute for the first 15. Make it all about them, the hugs, how's your day stuff, just listen. A lot of the time, these people need to feel listened to. They'll most likely talk themselves out whatever it is that has bothered them if they are bothered. Just don't interrupt. This helps set you up on the right foot. Finally, relapse. If you have paid attention, you're well on your way to leveling up your recovery. Remember, like anything in life, there is always a lag between action and reward. Stick with it and make sure you engage in activities we've just mentioned. If something does kick off or you feel a relapse, don't panic. This is normal. Emotional control is a skill, and like any skill, it's going to take some repetition to really master this. And remember, you always have options to regain control of your attention and emotions because you create them. If you feel a relapse is on the cards, then here's what you do. A contingency routine. A few great ways to get back on track when things inevitably don't go to plan are One option, plug back in here. This is the entire point of this app. Use the shorter options available and zero in on the guided techniques that resonate most with you. You don't have to listen to this whole red zone routine. You can do the 5, 10, 15 minute version or go straight to an individual technique like progressive mental relaxation or progressive muscular relaxation or even visualization, for example. It's just another opportunity for you to strengthen your emotional control muscle. And remember, if you do relapse, well done for noticing, taking ownership of your attention and engaging in one of the following options. You have other options that don't involve logging into an app by engaging in one of the following exercises that you now know how to do. One, engage in box breathing. If you need the help, there are multiple guided options right here on the Mindset app. Two, redirect your attention. Read a book, paperback, Kindle, flick on some lighthearted background radio, audio, or TV show. Three, if something does pop into your head, capture it. Catching thoughts means you don't have to hold them in your head. It's always good to keep a notepad at arm's length be it physical or digital. Right, congratulations on being aware, initiating action and following through on it. The vast majority act like they are slaves to their emotions. You haven't. The fact you're here is why I'm so confident you'll cultivate this incredible skill of being able to flick the off switch whenever you require. You're in an exclusive group of people that don't wallow in their own self-pity. You identify your problems and do something about it. You're engaging in outlier behavior, and very soon you're going to seriously reap the benefits of that, both in terms of your performance and for the sake of having a life. Through following this process, you're literally rewiring your brain's default pattern when it comes to switching off and maximizing growth. The more you do it, the stronger you'll get with this skill. Not only that, 
every time you execute one of these routines, the path gets easier. The first time will feel like hacking your way through the undergrowth. The 10th is like motoring down a highway. There's no end to how far you can take this. Great things are coming your way. Keep at it. We're always here to support your journey. See you soon.